What's up everybody and welcome back to my channel. We are at the hills behind my house and today we are going to be shooting the Leica M10 with the 50 Summicron and the Sony a7 III with the 50 GM and I'm going to try to edit these photos on the Sony to look like the Leica. Today I'm going to be taking photos of my wife Amanda. You can check her out at Grey Ribbon Tattoo. She's an incredible tattoo artist and in a couple of weeks you're going to watch her tattoo me on a vlog. So we're gonna do that. But I'm gonna take a few photos of her and I chose the a7 III because the megapixels of the M10 and the a7 III are pretty close, if not identical. I don't quite remember what this one is. All of the settings are gonna be completely identical. So we're gonna capture things exactly the same between both systems and see if we can make them look totally the same in Lightroom. You ready, Amanda? Here we go. Okay, so we did it. How you feel, Amanda? <laughs> the sun was burning my eyes. <laughs> but we did it. <laughs> but we did it, and now we're gonna head back home and we're gonna see if I can get these Sony files to edit and look like my Leica files. I'm really curious as to how this is gonna turn out. So we're gonna head home and go check it out. Okay, so now that we're back home, we're gonna jump into Lightroom and we're gonna take a look at how the Sony a7 III with the 50 millimeter GM compares to the Leica M10 with the 50 millimeter Summicron version five? I don't know what it is, but it's not the aspherical version. It's just they're like standard 50 mil Summicron. For those that really care about the specs, I shot both of these at f2.8. Each of them had an ISO of 200. The shutters varied only because on the Leica system, the shutter is one over 1500 and on Sony, it's one over 1600. But I promise you, it does not matter. So let's go ahead and take a look at Lightroom and see if we can see the differences. You're gonna notice right here, the top row is one system and the bottom row is another. So which one's which? I'm gonna give you three seconds. If you guessed that the top row was the Leica M10 with the Summicron, you were correct. The top row is the Leica M10. The bottom is the Sony. Everything being identical, you can see that the two photos look quite different from one another. And you would expect that because we're talking about two very different systems that have very different algorithms and different ways of calculating light metering. They have different sensors using different lenses. And what I want us to do today is we're gonna take these two images on the right, this one and this one, and we're gonna put them side by side and see if we can create the exact same look with the Sony file that we get with the Leica right out of the camera. And if this can be done, then technically a profile, not a preset, but a profile could be made that brings the Leica look to the Sony system to which you could then apply your presets and get a similar look. To understand the difference between presets and profiles, we'll have to do another video. A preset is a series of settings that go through Lightroom's tools and makes the changes to your raw file accordingly, whereas a profile is how the camera translates the raw file into Lightroom. 
So for instance, there are different Lightroom profiles for the camera models and the different camera settings. And it's all about how the program understands the data from the sensor. And that's what the profile is versus the preset would be settings applied to other various tools in Lightroom. And of course, that is a very general simplification of the process. There are dozens of videos you can look at about the difference between presets and profiles. Be sure to check those out on other people's channels if you want. So let's get started here in Lightroom. You'll notice the image on the left is the Leica M10, and you'll see the settings that I spoke about earlier right in the menu up top. We've got an ISO of 200 on a 50 mil at 2.8 and one over 1500 for the shutter. On the Sony file, we've got the same thing, ISO 200 on a 50 millimeter at f2.8 and one over 1600, because again, that's how Sony and Leica differ in their shutter. Now, I use my friend Jen's camera because she has a Sony a7 III, and that is very close to the same resolution as the M10. If you look up here, the Sony file is a 6,000 by 4,000, and the Leica M10 is a 5976 by 3984. It's just barely smaller. But I thought it was a fairer comparison than, say, my A7R5 would be against the M10 because you're talking about a photo that has three times the resolution. And I didn't think that would be a very fair comparison. So thanks, Jen, for loaning me the A7 III for this shoot and for capturing all that yummy B-roll of Amanda while I was shooting. And me too. So to not make this video last an hour as I go through this photo and try to tweak every little thing, I already did that hour before I came in here to record. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply the preset that I created to match the Sony against the Leica file. And I'm gonna walk you through all the things that I did to make that happen. So here we go, I'm gonna pull it up. And there it is. You'll see right here on the right, the Sony, with the 50 GM and on the left, the Leica. Let's do a little pixel peeping, especially on Amanda's skin and face. I think this is pretty freaking close. It's not perfect, but I spent an hour making tweaks to this to try to get it perfect. I'm really happy at how this turned out. In fact, I was even doing things like punching in on these background colors to just try my best to make them match as best I could by tweaking various settings in the different places we'll walk through in a minute. And I really do feel like it got pretty close. I mean, like I said, if I look at the Leica file, it has its own kind of vibe. And when I pull up the Sony, it's a little different, but man, side by side, I really do think that they are fairly close to one another. And it would be great if Lightroom didn't bug out on me here. And just to show you, you'll see the one on the right is the Sony file and the one on the left is the Leica file. So let's go through now and let's talk about all the things that I did to make these match. So the first thing I did actually was the curve and I started with the RGB part of the curve and I put a touch more just contrast in Sony's file because I felt like when I look at Leica photos, they have a lot more contrast right out of the camera. So I wanted to add a touch of contrast, but I didn't want to go up and just smoke this slider all the way up. People talk about micro contrast happening in Leica lenses, and there's micro contrast in the GM lenses as well. One of the ways you can kind of accent micro contrast is on the RGB curve versus the slider. So I, I tend to find that when I start adding contrast through the curve, I get more rich color contrast than I do if I'm just bringing the slider up on the light section up top. So what I did was I added just a touch of contrast to the curve and then I tweaked that curve a little bit to add a touch of warmth to the shadows of the Sony. I added a touch of warmth to the blacks, but I added a little green to the shadows and I, I sort of offset that on this side too. And this is some very fine tuning stuff, but I messed around with the RGB curves and then I went to the light curve and I faded the whites just a touch the white point on the Sony file to smooth out some of the highlights that were across Amanda's face. Sony, the dynamic range has captured way more reflection off of her skin than the Leica file. And so by bringing this down a touch, it helped chill that out a little bit and make it a touch more consistent. 
Let's take a look at the color mixer. I'm gonna walk you through all the colors. Red, I saturated a little more and I turned the luminance down to inject a touch more color. By bringing luminance down, you're actually adding some saturation as well. The orange, I turned the luminance down uh, considerably more than red. I pushed the saturation up a little bit and then I actually took orange towards yellow, which is something I really don't ever do. I typically push orange towards red a little bit when I'm working on my own presets. The yellow I push towards green a little to make it match that green that's in the fields and the hill behind. I saturated it more and I brought the luminance down. I didn't touch greens, I didn't touch teal, but blue, I actually adjusted the hue to make the blue more teal. If you look at Sony's blue is way more blue, purple, than Leica's blue, which has much more of a teal tone to it. So I. I brought that over. I actually turned the luminance up a little bit, which of course adds a little more brightness to that color, but it also desaturates it a touch. I didn't touch purple and I did not touch magenta. The next thing I did was actually in color grading. If you look here, I added a touch of warmth down in the shadows, but then I cranked the shadows down to bring these blacks a touch more in line with Leica. And I may have gone a bit too far now that I'm looking at it, but we're gonna leave it there because I, I felt like it was important to do that to try to match the overalls she's wearing as well as the skin of her arm. So I was kind of using this section here in my color matching. And I think it's pretty close without getting it you know too far off from, from where it needed to be. If I go to the mid-tones, I kept the mid-tones super warm with the hue on zero, but I brought it up pretty saturated. 15 is actually a pretty significant amount of saturation I have found on color grading. And then with the highlights, I didn't touch them at all. So that is what I did to the colors. I brought the overall color up. And with saturation, I brought the saturation down just a touch because after I added those different channel saturations, it felt a little too colorful. So I brought the saturation down to make it match. So that kind of summarizes what I did to the curve and the colors. The next thing I wanna talk about is what I did to the texture, clarity, and the sharpening because the 50GM is so incredibly sharp, but this little Sumacron, wow, very sharp and has such a vibe to it. It is just nowhere near as sharp as the 50GM, but it's also possible that I suck at rangefinder focusing. But I do feel like I actually got the focus pretty good, but it's just not as sharp. So here's what I had to do to make to make this match. And I'm, I'm gonna punch in and I want you guys to notice her hair because I was kind of going off of the hair and her eyes to try to get these to be the same. On this file, you'll see that I brought sharpening all the way down to zero, just to get rid of those super crispy lines. Then I came up here and I tweaked the clarity and texture down a little as well. I also removed a little contrast by subtracting some of the dehazer. I went to a negative five, which if you're ever wanting to edit kind of more of a vintage feel, if you bring clarity down, sharpening down, and you take dehaze to the left, you start to inject some of that vintage, especially film look on the highlights to your photos. I have another video about that. I'm gonna link it right here. You can check it out whenever you have time. Now, by doing those things, I don't feel like this is a soft image at all. Like it still looks incredibly sharp, but you'll see sharpening is all the way down. And I've really tried to make this photo match and not be so clinical in its sharpness. The last thing I did was I went to the light section and I felt at this point between what I did with the luminance and with color grading and what I did with the curves is I put a touch too much contrast in the photos. So I used the overall slider to bring it down until I felt like it was starting to get consistent. And I was kind of looking at the dark side of her hair and, and how that played with the hill just to try to get that to match. I brought the highlights on the Sony down a touch. I boosted the shadows a little bit to try again to remove some of all the added contrast that I put in. And then I did the same thing on the whites and blacks. I brought the whites down a little bit and the blacks up. And again, this was just to smooth out all those transitions between the highlights and the lowlights. There are many ways you can get to this exact same setting through the playing with the curve and the luminance and the contrast, but this is what worked for me. And when I typically am trying to match an edit or make a preset or anything, I don't really want to touch the light section of the file until the end. I think it's because like my own personal workflow is 
I shoot with the light that I have and I expose the way that I expose. The same would be said of white balance. Like I typically shoot at a custom white balance and it's what I like and I let it roll. So you'll never see my presets doing a ton to the light section because I just personally don't like tweaking that too much other than just maybe some highlights and shadow tweaking. I find that a lot of times when I'm looking at other people's presets, the highlights are down all the way, shadows get really raised up, but that just makes this kind of HDR lifeless looking photo and I don't like that look at all personally. So that kind of summarizes what I did to make these photos match, but will it copy? So what I'm gonna do now is copy this one. I'm gonna take this photo of Amanda. This was shot on the Leica. And I'm gonna take this photo, which is the Sony. Again, same settings. I'm gonna paste that preset on there and let's take a look. I think that pasting it on works pretty well. Her overalls on the Sony are not quite as colorful as on the Leica, so I would might want to go in and make some tweaks to this one if I was trying to match it, but I would say we're like 90 plus percent there. How about this one? Let's put this one here and that one there and let's paste it on again. So now we are pretty close. Again, if I'm looking at the skin tones, the Leica on the left is a touch more red. Maybe the Sony is a little more green, yellowish. And I'm looking at the saturation of the overalls. I feel like the Leica captured that better and more true to real life than Sony did, but we're talking very small details here. I think if I was to make a profile for this, and guess what? I actually did. You'll find it in my shop, link down below. I think that this profile would get you pretty close to the Leica colors but you're never gonna recreate the Leica look unless you shoot on a Leica. I've even tried adapting this Leica lens on my Sony system. In fact, you can watch a video right here that I did recently where I put this lens on the Sony a7R5 and the M10 and took a couple of photos in Yosemite National Park and you can see the differences for yourself in my video, does the sensor matter? Guess what we found out? It really does. But if I wanted my photos to be consistent and I was shooting a combination of Leica and Sony, which I do very often, this profile that I've made, I think will help me bring some consistency when I want my Sony images to have a similar feel to my Leica images. So a next step for you would be to go to my shop, grab that profile and see what you think. Does it work for you the same way? If you have a Leica M camera and a Sony system, do you find that it looks the same? I would love to hear your comments. Oh, and uh, hopefully you're still watching my video and you haven't gone to my website yet at the link below. This profile is completely free. You only have to give me your email address, which I'll occasionally email you. And then if you don't like my emails, you can always unsubscribe and I don't know, write me a hateful comment down below. But all of this to say, I find this super interesting and while I cannot re completely recreate the Leica look on my Sony system, it's good to know that we can get these photos on two different systems to at least be related to each other if we're presenting a portfolio or a series together using two systems. And I gotta be honest, I love autofocus. There's a lot of times where I'm using my Sony system alongside of my M10, but I also love my Q2 which has one of the most incredible lenses I've ever shot on, but it's only 28 and that doesn't work in every scenario. We'll set that right there for the rest of the video. I hope you have found this video interesting, maybe helpful for you. Download that profile and put it in your Lightroom. Let me know what you think. Shoot me a DM on Instagram, hit that like button, subscribe, shoot me a message on my website. All the links are below. Join along, we're making a great community here. Every day I get so pumped to interact with your comments or to get DMs from you. It has been a super cool, only like 45 day journey so far in this YouTube world and I am loving every minute of it. So I'm excited about what we've got coming next. So stay tuned, stick around and I will see you next time.